Hello everyone, Ray here. Exciting time, the Mate 9 and the Mate 9 Pro. The Pro variant, however, packs a smaller 5.5 inches curved display. There are some variations in the hardware and the design as well. So what are the differences? Let's find out. First of all, the design, the Mate 9, uninspired. Just like all the Chinese phones with the antenna bands and the fingerprint sensor on the back, fortunately we've got a decent low-profile yet stylish case included inside the box. The Mate 9 now looks sleek and a bit more flagship-like. But again, the dual camera setup on the Mate 9 has got a minimalist design. The chamfered edges and the gentle curve on the back also mean it is indeed a well-built device overall. Back on the front, we've got a massive, giant, humongous 5.9 inches display, but it doesn't feel that enormous at all, thanks to the super thin bezels. Screen to body ratio is as high as 77.5% on this guy. Together with a 2.5D glass panel on the front, the Mate 9 might be a bit boring compared to the gorgeous Mate 9 Pro, but the build quality is more than just acceptable for a flagship favorite for sure. Speaking of the gorgeous Mate 9 Pro, the extra hundreds of pounds or dollars price difference definitely results in more refined and detailed design. Look, the brushed texture on the power button and the dual curved screen, also the slightly curved back, the Mate 9 Pro is one of the slimmest phones I've held, while maintaining a smooth and comfortable feeling in hands. The Mate 9 looks premium with a case, while the Mate 9 Pro shines before it leaves the factory. Hardware-wise, the Mate 9 Pro here comes from Hong Kong, with dual SIM support, but sadly we can't expand the 120GB storage with a microSD card. However, we can on the Mate 9. The UK variant here doesn't support dual SIM configuration, but it depends on where you buy the Mate 9. Like in Hong Kong, you can choose between inserting an extra SIM or a microSD card instead. Infrared blaster in the meantime is a shared feature, but the 3.5mm jack on the Mate 9 is placed on the top side, while the Pro variant misses a balanced speaker cutout on the bottom side thanks to the jack. But they both boast a new USB Type-C port, with 22.5W unbelievably fast charging out of the box. The fingerprint sensors on the other hand, yes one is on the front, while the Mate 9 packs one on the back, but they are identical when it comes to the speed. So, the Mate 9 is equally well built with the same hardware, but you are getting a much more appealing design on the Pro variant. Is it worth the extra cost? Is your decision for sure. The cameras, they are identical on papers. The Leica branded dual lens setup backed with optical image stabilization and laser autofocus. They've packed the same camera app as well. In reality, they performed almost the same. Almost, in this particular shot, we are getting a whole lot more details in the shadows on the Mate 9. Sharpness, the same. In this particular shot, the Mate 9 Pro boosted the contrast and resulted darker shadows and slightly overexposed highlights. The Mate 9 performed slightly better in these two sets of photos. This time around, they performed really close. The white balance, sharpness, everything's the same. But if you take a close look, the Mate 9 Pro did a little bit better in capturing the object there at the back. So I would say you won't notice the difference unless you put them side by side. Here we've come to the low light performance. Again, they performed really close, but there are still noticeable differences. The image taken with the Mate 9 has a slightly higher contrast and a marginally greener white balance. They captured the exact same amount of details, by the way. Again, the image captured with the Mate 9 looks a bit greener, but that's it. The key is, both the Mate 9 and the Mate 9 Pro shoot some of the best images. The cameras are absolutely breathtaking. They shoot super crisp, super detailed images with a unique color scheme. They are nothing like to other smartphone cameras. Sure, that's a camera module developed by Leica and Huawei, instead of just Huawei itself.
performance and features, again, almost the same. They're running Android 7.0 based EMUI 5, they use the interface and features like multi-window and one-handed operations the same. Feel free to watch my full review on the Mate 9 Pro to learn more. The differences are, the fingerprint sensor on the Mate 9 doubles as a notification panel slider. It is also smartly programmed to skip images in the gallery app, while the AMOLED screen-based Mate 9 Pros got always on display. Not a huge difference, so move on to the speed, real-world performance. Yep, the Mate 9 here is the 64GB version with 4GB of RAM. The Pro variant does pack 2 extra gigabytes of RAM, but in reality, as you guys can see here, they performed literally identical. However, the Mate 9 Pro did finish our speed test a little bit quicker than the Mate 9, but still the fastest Android phone you can buy right now. In the second round, all the apps are stored in memories, even on the Mate 9 with 4 gigs of RAM. But the Mate 9 Pro is indeed a little bit more responsive when it comes to background apps switching. The marginal difference, however, will not be noticed in day-to-day -day media consumption, unless you put them side by side again. Gaming experience is another story. The game I'm playing here is Perfect Angle, it is one of the most demanding games I've played. The Mate 9 plays any modern titles incredibly smooth, thanks to the lower but adequate resolution 1080p screen, and of course gaming on a 5.9 inches display is far better than most other smaller smartphones. With the same processor and GPU, the Mate 9 Pro's got much more pixels to deal with, and the result is, frame drops are here and there, the experience far from perfect. But normally, for most games, the Mate 9 Pro delivers smooth gaming experience as well. But if you are super conscious about extreme gaming experience, the larger screen is already a reason to pick up the Mate 9 rather than the Mate 9 Pro. Multimedia experience. The IPS display and the AMOLED screen on the Mate 9 and the Mate 9 Pro respectively are great. Of course, AMOLED screen means inky deep black, ultra wide viewing angle, and this particular screen also squeezes much more pixels in a smaller area as well. The vibrant colors and the extra pixels make the Mate 9 Pro stand out in this comparison. But Huawei's given the Mate 9 a decent, actually top-notch IPS screen. Colors are sharp, unfortunately light bleeding when the screen is tilted is unavoidable on an LCD backlit panel. And 1080p spreads across a 5.9 inches display. It would be better to pack a Quad HD display, but yeah, it helps save some battery. More on that in a second. With a beautiful display, we'll need a decent speaker to enhance video watching and gaming experience. Thankfully, both of them has got an iPhone 7 or HTC 10 like dual speaker setup. However, the Mate 9 Pro sounds marginally flatter and thinner compared to the Mate 9, but again, not a big deal. Headphone audio output in the meantime is identical, so we are talking a sharper, pixels-packed display versus a massive, brighter display with smoother gaming experience. Last but definitely not least, the battery life. Both the Mate 9 and the Mate 9 Pro packs a whopping 4000 mAh battery. Is it true that the 1080p based Mate 9 blows the Mate 9 Pro away? Not really, according to our standard battery life test, that plays YouTube videos for 4 hours with a maximum screen brightness. The Mate 9 Pro is the absolute best when it comes to battery life, while the Mate 9 Pro outperformed other smartphones with IPS displays. And if we turn down the brightness to 50% and consider Facebook serving and gaming as well, the gap between them becomes smaller, but the Mate 9 Pro is still the better performer here. Anyway, they've got more than 60% battery left after 3 hours of media consumption. Impressive. Should you pick up the more reasonably priced Mate 9, or go for the top model from Huawei? They pack the best smartphone camera, they perform equally well in day-to-day -day media consumption, they are even running the same software. So, is the 2 extra gigabytes of RAM worth it? It does boost the phone's multitasking experience, but the difference only a fraction of a second. We are even getting smoother gaming experience on the Mate 9, thanks to the 1080p screen. MicroSD expansion is also exclusive to the Mate 9. However, the Mate 9 Pro lasts slightly longer on a single charge, and it shines before it leaves the factory. 
So that's it for today. I do like the massive 6 inches display on the Mate 9, but I also like the curved design on the Mate 9 Pro. Which is your better pick? Comments below.